Sure. All right, so we're going to continue uh, in Christian sexuality. This is kind of crazy. This is week seven. Next week is our wrap-up week. I, I, when we started this, I wasn't sure what it would feel like as we were getting towards the end. Frankly, I didn't know, you know, eight weeks is a long time. I'm like, I don't even know if we're going to get to the end. But we've tackled some really big topics, and we'll do some, uh, a little bit of review and a little bit of kind of the question, now what, next week. This morning, we're going to go the route of talking about an aspect of I, what I bet is a piece of a lot of your favorite movies. Now, you probably wouldn't admit this in mixed company, but one-on-one, -on -one, I'm willing to bet that most of us like a good rom-com every now and then, okay? I'm all about it. No shame. You know, we, we kind of like maybe this little love and romance. Uh, the guys are like, no, I really like the drama and the instability. Maybe we like the, the breakup moment or like my father-in-law watches Hallmark movies and he always knows. He doesn't have to look at the clock. When the music hits, he's like, oh, it's 10 to the hour. They're about to come back together. And like 20 minutes before that, the music is the different note. And he's like, oh, here comes the conflict. But they're great and really we love a good rom-com. Every now and then, you just, you just got to enjoy one. If you, if you don't, there's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't seen some of the good ones yet. So if you need recommendations, let me know. I got you. But... We need to remember what we see in Hollywood should not influence our lives. And this morning we're going to talk about dating and what we see portrayed in these romantic comedy movies from Hollywood. They, they shouldn't influence how we view dating or how we choose to date, especially those of us that are following Jesus. Real life and Hollywood are different from one another. The Bible gives us principles to help us think about dating, uh, but it really doesn't give us direct or specific instructions on how to date. And so honest dialogue about how to honor God within a romantic relationship is important uh, as we talk about any aspect of Christianity, and especially as we continue this conversation on Christian sexuality. So what we're going to look at a little bit more is this, honor, honor, uh, sorry, this honest dialogue about how to honor God. That is something the Bible talks a lot about. So I'm, I'm curious. I want to open it up a little bit. How do you define, what even is dating? So we're going to talk about dating. What the heck is it? What is dating? Someone shout it out. Okay, well, several of you are dating. Well, not like are dating. Several of you have significant others. What, what is dating? What is it? I don't know what it is. Somebody has to tell me or I'm going to be really confused this morning. Help me out. Just Google it. What? Holding, holding hands? Like this like physical closeness with another person? Yeah, what else is dating? What, what is it? Some of you are doing it. Some of you want to do it. What is it? <laughs> Jake. Uh, well, this came from my dad. It's kind of like a, uh, now that I think about it, it's almost like a, like, a, like a sad description of it. He said it's like practicing divorce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh. It's, it's like you're not, like, you're not like married at the moment. And uh, like you can't do like married people stuff. Okay. Okay, maybe that would be a better definition of, an, of it than, hey, do you want a date? It's going to fail. <laughs> All right, Emma, you were raising your hand. Um, it's like getting to know someone for like the goal of them potentially being like your husband or wife one day. Like, you can get together in that way. So I'm curious. I, I want an honest... Ah, oh, man. I want an honest. I, I want an honest reaction. To, I want an honest uh, response to this. How much of dating in high school? Genuinely, I'm not disputing Emma. I'm challenging it. Genuinely, if we're completely honest, is actually about whether or not this person will be a good potential spouse for me. Two percent. Two. Okay. Okay. She's. Yeah. Like we know some of these right answers. We're like, yeah, dating's about finding a spouse. 
Is that why you're dating? Not at all. Like, we know this, but you're right. And actually, that's a little snapshot of what they're gonna talk about today in our video, so I would agree with you. What is it about dating that makes us wanna do it? I've talked to, especially some of the guys, I know some of your motivations for wanting to date, but why, why do we wanna date? Tell me. Hormones. Hormones, yes, absolutely. <laughs> hey, that person makes me feel better. I should explore this. Yeah, what else? What is it about dating that we want to do it? What, why? Emma? You kind of have someone who's like obligated to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You have someone obligated to talk to you. I mean, Amanda and I maybe put a more positive spin on it. Like, hey, there's always someone that like wants to talk to me. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, obligation. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. Just like wanting to be wanted. Wanting to be wanted, yeah. We all know what it, what it feels like for someone to, to kind of love on us or maybe seek us out in different areas, not even romantic. Yeah, what else? Why do we want to date? All right, what are, what are the pros and maybe, yeah, what are the pros of dating? Why is it a good thing? So again, several of you are dating, so hopefully there's some reason. Yeah, Emma. You have someone who share like the highs and lows of your days. Yeah. Elijah? You have someone to comfort you. Just want to cover you, yeah? yeah. Emma? <laughs> they can like push you in your faith and like push you towards your goals. That's good. That's good. What are some cons of dating? Oh, John. <laughs> to quote my boy Paul, um, when you're focusing on like it's just another thing in the world that you're focusing on instead of God. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Blythe? I think from no experience, but like <laughs> like imagine like having like someone you like Oh my gosh, like, let me check in with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There's always the breakup? Always, that's sad. I mean, yeah, especially if we go with, with Brady Basom's definition of we're practicing divorce. <laughs> yep, but yeah, breakups. Yeah, like, that's a bummer. Like, it's good to feel wanted. It's terrible to either break up or initiate a breakup. Both sides are terrible. Nally? If something goes bad, you can kind of feel trapped because you don't want to hurt the person or you just care about the person and then you're like, uh-oh. Yeah. Man, obviously with all this, there's a lot we could dive into. There's a lot that I am wanting to. Yeah, Phil? It's a money sucker. It's a money sucker. <laughs> That's true, though. I, I appreciate chivalry. But at some point, it's ridiculous. When Amanda and I were dating, like, I generally paid, but it was out of a desire to bless her, not out of, like, an obligation. Nor did Amanda, like, expect, like, this is great. We're going to date. I'm going to see how many free meals I can rack up out of this. Like, yeah, there's something nice about, uh, about guys. That there's something nice about providing. Ladies, there's nothing wrong with receiving. But, man... Credit card bill gets high. Uh, what does the culture say about dating? It's good for you. It's good for you? What about, well, you know, hang on, that's great. What did you say, Matt? Sex. What does the culture say about dating and sex? They are to be together. They are to be, we talked about this like in the very first week, or maybe the second or third week, but we talked about the culture has this expectation of like, you're weird if you're dating and not having sex. And we can, we can broaden that. One of the things that we've walked through with this curriculum is, now we talk about sex, it's not just intercourse. There's, there's a whole lot that's involved in that. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, somebody last week was like, good, we're going to talk about dating. That, doesn't, that means we're not going to talk about sex. And, nope, still it's Christian, Christian sexuality. Um, but yeah, the culture has this weird, like if you're, if you're dating and not having sex, there's something wrong with you. And I bet the culture just assumes when people are dating that they're having sex. Right? Amanda and I, when we were dating, we were both working, well, I was working here, part-time and then full-time while we were dating and she was working full-time. And I bet her coworkers just assumed what was happening in our personal life. And it wasn't. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. It's not even just dating now. It's you watch a movie and the person just meets and they're having the memory of that night. I know, right? Oh my goodness. With no repercussions, consequences or, or anything. All right, what is friendship? Being like this? Yeah. So what, is, what else? What is friendship? What do you think about friendship? What is friendship? Side note, I'm not necessarily saying it's connected to dating. The and on there, dating and friendships. Now the second part, what is 
friendship. Natalie. Yeah. I think if we were to go through a lot of definitions of friendship, we would actually find that there's some parallels to dating. Like Emma said, like someone that pushes you in your faith. Someone that, that wants to know about you. People that pursue us. Like we, we all, even if we put on a, a tough exterior of desiring, we're like, no, I'd rather just be home and alone and I wish nobody would talk to me. Like, I don't, I don't think we really mean that. We all want to be part of something. And I think what we could see is clearly there's a lot of thoughts. There's a wide variety of thoughts and opinions on dating. And there's also different definitions of friendship. And I think that's why it's important that we walk through it together, especially as a group of people that uh, are mostly following Jesus and desiring what is both dating and friendship. What do these things look like if I'm also chasing after Jesus? So this week's video that we'll watch in just a minute will help guide us through a couple different perspectives on dating. Uh, and through it all, I want us to remember, and what they're going to say is, it's all about seeking Jesus first and foremost. They're, they're going to present a couple different perspectives, and there's overlap between these different perspectives, and we may feel different ways or be drawn more to one perspective or another, but I hope that uh, you will begin to see that intimate, meaningful friendships are vital to living the Christian life. Real friends, I'm going to challenge something that our culture is, is all about right now. Uh, real friends are not on a screen. Real friends are not people that follow you or you follow them on social media. They are real people who are doing life with you. And if you're pursuing Jesus, they're pointing you back to Jesus in everything that you do. This whole idea of friendship is actually one of the reasons why our midweek program is small group based so that you have a space to develop friendships with other peers that maybe you might not know outside of church with the hope that they're pointing you back to Jesus, that they're, they're asking tough questions, that they're coming alongside you, that they know who you are and that they're a real person with you, in front of you, and checking in on you. This week's conversation on even both dating and friendships could open up old wounds. I want to be honest about that, as we've seen with each topic that we've talked about. It might also provide you with all kinds of opportunities to criticize relationships that have gone bad. Or even to blame shift things that we feel guilty about, making it somebody else's problem. And I want to encourage you, flat out, don't go there. As a community, let's stay focused on helping each other pursue healthy relationships in a space that allows us to seek redemption, healing, and so much more as we understand what it is like to pursue a flourishing life within Jesus. And like we've been talking about every week, in every area of our life, including our sexuality, our dating life, and our friendships. We're going to watch the video together. And then I've got some more things to share with you on this other side. Someone want to grab, Mateo, will you grab the lights for me, brother? And yes, this week's video with Will and Monica 100% has another amazing, not cheesy at all, opening. It's great. Yay. I want to make sure we were on the right one. It's cheesy and great. How could it not be? And so for our last little bit this morning, I want to just share with you some of my thoughts. Um, and these are going to be more dating-oriented than friendship-oriented. But, but, but I want you to still remember what was shared about the importance of both and, and really how friendships at the core of it were represented uh, in the scriptures and, and be able to study that together. Uh, and I want to leave some of that for you guys as small groups uh, on not this Tuesday, next Tuesday to be able to talk through. But I have, I have here, I went through some stuff this, this last week and really tried to pull together. I, I almost called it Rob's t t like 10 Commandments for Dating, but that felt a little bit too authoritative. Um, so these are just sort of like my 10 thoughts, opinions, recommendations, guidelines, whatever you want to call it, uh, for dating, uh, especially as a Christian high schooler. Uh, they're not necessarily in order. When we look at the 10 Commandments in Scripture, 
we don't necessarily say, well, they're in order of most importance. So as long as I just kind of stick with like, I'm only breaking like eight, nine, and 10, I'm, 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 I'm okay. Obviously we have pursuing God and not having idols in our life and keeping him holy at the beginning, but the 10 commandments are a, are a set. We don't get to pick and choose. All right, so the same with, with these. They're not necessarily in order, um, and I, I hope they're important to you. Uh, and even challenge you to think about how they apply to, to friendship. Uh, you don't need to date. Dear high school student, you do not need to date right now. But also, you don't need to be afraid of dating, especially when you think about it in the long term. If dating makes you afraid, if that word makes you nervous or, or anxious, probably not the right time for you to date. Uh, for those that want to date, I get it. There's the thrill of being liked, learning about yourself, learning about somebody else, and so much tied in this desire to date. But it's not something needed. To, it, it, we don't need to pursue it all the time. It really comes down to, for me, pursuing it based on someone's maturity, mental, and spiritual strength and growth. And I would even argue that, that your age plays a big factor in that. You guys are teenagers going through a lot of physical, mental, emotional, hormonal, chemical changes, and it skews judgment and reason and things get in the way. And it's okay to allow that season of life to progress and then step into dating. I also want to let you know that dating is not something to engage in if you think it's going to fix something. You shouldn't be entering into dating if you think there's something wrong with you or, or you view yourself in some way and you think dating that, man, that other person will bring me wholeness and completeness. First of all, the only thing that can bring us wholeness and completeness is Jesus, not somebody else. The Bible is clear on that. Second of all, that is an insane amount of pressure to put on a person. Now, in relationships, there is healing in brokenness. But dating should not be a problem-solving metric for your life. Uh, with, with this, also, I want to let you know that rarely do high school crushes or high school relationships turn into long-term marriages. I think the statistic is something like 97% of high school relationships end and do not turn into long-term marriages. Now, I know... Everybody that dates in high school says, not 97%? Excellent. We will be the 3% that makes it. And maybe you will. Maybe you'll be like David and Susan Wheat who met in high school and are still going strong. But I want to, I want to encourage you to seek the Holy Spirit. We don't often think about it in context of dating, but seek the Holy Spirit to determine if it's wise for you to date now. And just because someone else is doesn't mean that that's what God's placing on your life right now. You need to pursue spiritual health first. Pursuing spiritual health in Jesus is for you as an individual. It's for you and your friend group. It's you in a couple relationship, whatever area, whatever area of your life it may be, you need to be pursuing Jesus first. Probably not a lot of teenagers in a dating relationships go to action. Is how do I pursue Jesus with this other person? Nothing matters more in life than your relationship with Jesus. Before you consider dating, you need to seek him. Because this relationship needs to be nurtured and grown in every area of your life. Uh, and then, as you and your, your close friends, you need to be pursuing Jesus together. Be surrounded by people that will point you back to Jesus. That aren't afraid to get their hands dirty with your life. And if you enter into a dating relationship... There needs to be incredible intentionality to seek Jesus both together and continued as an individual. This means that you're following Jesus. It doesn't matter how tempting that person is. If they're not following Jesus, you should not enter into a romantic relationship with them. That's hard. But it's important. It is important for a Christian that we be romantically matched with someone who is also seeking Jesus. The old jokes of date to save or flirt to convert are funny 
but should not be our motivation. Oh, I will pursue that person. It's okay that they don't love Jesus. I like them. They make me feel good. I'm sure through our dating relationship, they'll find Jesus. Maybe, but probably not. Because the world tends to pull Christians down faster and easier than Christians pull people out of the world. And that's only heightened in a dating relationship. Now, you should have friends that are non-Christians. I think every believer should have friends that don't know Jesus because if we don't, who are we ministering to and who are we representing Jesus to? But those we were romantically involved in and those in our close-knit, best friend group, posse, whatever you want to call it, need to be Jesus followers. That comes also as much of this from personal experience in my own life. And I'm sorry, we don't have time to dive into Rob's dating history today. Maybe some other time. If you want to know, ask questions. The third I have is maintain honor and respect. In all aspects of dating, you need to maintain an attitude of honor. Now, this isn't just for the guys, but I'm going to lean heavily into the young men. You need to be honorable in all that you do. This involves honoring the person that you're dating. It also means honoring both sets or however set is defined of parents and family involved in this relationship. You dating someone, you need to honor their parents and yours, and you also need to honor yourself. The Bible teaches us to respect parents. And I know sometimes that's hard, especially as teenagers, because we as teens know it all. And our parents are out of touch with reality or don't know what's going on. But the Bible says we need to honor and respect our parents. That means valuing their opinions, their advice, and probably hardest of all, their rules. You may not always like it. You may not always agree with it. But the Bible says we're to honor and respect our parents. It's also important to honor yourself so you don't go further into something then you want to or find yourself in a situation that you don't want to be in. And above all, you need to respect the person that you're dating. This young man or young woman who matter to Jesus and are his child. And when you're dating someone, you begin to understand God is their father. And young men, gentlemen, you need to honor the young lady you are dating because you're building habits of the way that you're gonna live out your life. And especially for the young men, the way that you are dating and the way that honor and respect play into that, you are building your foundation and how you will someday pursue and engage with your spouse. Number four, be yourself around others. When dating or, or even seeking new friends, be you. Let people get to know you. I have something that might sound kind of funny, but it's also pretty real with this, especially in the realms of being interested in dating. Be you, but don't be creepy. Don't be a stalker. That includes in your actions, in how you're, you're maybe checking out someone on social media, in your thought life. Gentlemen, we like to craft stories in our minds. Many young men build fantasies in their minds about someone they're interested in. That's something to surrender to the Holy Spirit and allow him to work through because it doesn't lead to, I have seen that lead friends down very dangerous and bad paths as they allow their thought life to get ahead of everything and their imagination to build these wild scenarios because we are young man, 16, 17, 18 years old, hormones raging, pretty girl smiles at us or she brushes our hand and all of a sudden, boom, the imagination goes wild. Don't be creepy. Girls, if he's creepy, bring someone into the conversation. He's not worth your time right then. Use discernment in relationships with what you choose to share and how to share it. I see this all the time with guys, with the girl they are interested in. Because guys recognize girls are more emotional and the way that I can get her to be interested in me is I can pour out everything. It's not healthy. Guys need guys girls need girls. As you're interested in someone and even beginning a dating relationship, you need to use discernment with what is shared and how you share it and when you share it. I made a promise 
that before Amanda and I got married, she would know everything about me. That does not mean on our first date, I'm like, here's everything. That'd be a lot and kind of weird. But over time, we had conversations that we were able to engage. And I will tell you, the most difficult conversation I ever had with Amanda was the one where I walked through my dating history. Because it was hard and it was full of brokenness. And I felt guilty of the things that belonged to people in my past that didn't now belong to the woman that was about to become my wife. And we don't always think about that. Uh, it's also good with this to, to get to know people. But also give, give the person you're interested in some room to breathe. All right? No one likes being crowded. Your crush is not an object for you to drool over. You also don't have to know everything about them right now. You also don't always have to be around them. It's okay to give yourselves both a little bit of space. Don't be creepy. And if there's someone you like and they don't reciprocate your, to your intentions, you respect that and you back off. Grace is key in, in friendship, in dating relationship. Redemption in Jesus is one of the main things that we've been talking about in this entire series. This means understanding and leading into grace towards the stories of others, towards the differences of others, and towards yourself. Especially understanding the redemptive grace of Jesus when a relationship goes too far. Grace is not something to be abused. We don't just keep coming back to it intentionally messing up and intentionally coming back and being in the cycle, but it's, it's a free gift of Jesus that he offers to allow us wholeness in him once again. And let me tell you, grace, learn about it in dating. You're going to need it in marriage. Boundaries. We talked a little bit about boundaries in the video. Uh, this idea of intimacy, which is really what boundaries are connected to, intimacy is God's idea. And it's a reflection of his relationship within the Trinity and his desired relationship with humanity. And what we like to do is get in the driver's seat and determine what intimacy looks like and how it's carried out. It's extremely important to establish, verbalize, and maintain various boundaries within a relationship. Sometimes the lack of boundaries in one area of life that we don't think is connected to another will call it, cause us to fall in another area. Uh, some of the areas that could require boundaries, again, to be verbalized and held to, uh, include spiritual boundaries. Yep, it sounds great. My girlfriend and I are going to meet up every night at 11 o'clock in the backyard and we're going we're gonna to pray together. No, not wise. Physical boundaries. And funny enough, what's a physical boundary for you may not be the same physical boundary as it is for somebody else. That's not something to be mocked or ridiculed. It's something to be supportive as we seek out friendships emotional boundaries, even social boundaries. We, we have to go through all these different areas of life and set boundaries. They're not meant to curb your fun. Boundaries are meant to protect you and to protect this other person and help you remain rooted in God's way of life. We talked a little bit on Tuesday when you're driving on the freeway and you see the guardrails, you don't think those are getting in the way of me being able to do what I want. You're saying, man, I'm thankful that that boundary, that barrier is there to save me. It's the same thing with relationships. Boundaries are important, are something that are important on the onset of a relationship and need to be maintained. And I recommend, especially in high school, bringing someone else into that conversation, a dear friend that you can tell the boundaries to and isn't afraid to call you on your stuff. Take dating seriously. This is kind of a three-parter. Take it seriously, don't rush, but it's also okay to enjoy it. It's really fun having someone to hang out with. I remember Amanda and I dated. There was one day we just grabbed a friend's kayaks and we went kayaking for the afternoon. There was no serious conversations. It was just fun until I got scared because I was like, what if an orca comes up underneath us right now? <laughs> Chances of that were slim. We had an awesome time. It was super fun. It's a good idea to have an eye on the future and to have an honest connect to marriage and growth, but don't rush a relationship and certainly don't rush the romance, and don't rush marriage. It's okay to still have fun in dating. You're getting to know someone. That should be fun. Develop friendships. In life, especially at your age, authentic relationships in high school will carry you farther than any romantic relationship will. I want to encourage you to grow in authentic relationships with others as well as someone you're interested in. Friendship should be the foundation in your relationship. 
It's also connected to God's design. God designed us for relationships, to be known and to know other people. Know God's design for sex in marriage. There's a proper place for sex as God intended. We've been studying that for a while now. But God intended sex to happen within a covenant marriage of a man and a woman. You are not losing or missing out on anything by not having sexual aspects be part of your dating life. You're actually moving towards a more flourishing life in Jesus in a future marriage. And I know the temptations that take place in a dating relationship. I, I know how it can be. And it's just a reminder for us to stay rooted in our pursuit of Jesus and understand his intention for marriage. Don't allow short-term temptation to take away from long-term gifts in God. And that's the m most obvious point that I want to connect back to understanding the grace that's in Jesus. And last one, don't give in to, to pressures. Real life is not Hollywood romance. Pursue as Jesus intends. Not how Hollywood says, not how social media says, not even how our friends suggest things should be. Don't date just because others are. Also, that's a terrible reason if the person you're dating ever found out. Why do you like me? It's because other people are dating and I was feeling like I was missing out. That might not go over well. But focus on pursuing Jesus above anything else. And this includes uh, being tempted to engage in sexual activities, either in a dating relationship uh, or as single. We need to remain rooted in God's word and seek the Holy Spirit to stay focused. All right, just a couple summary points and then we'll, we'll get out of here. So for both dating and friendship, it's more about pursuing Jesus and a life with him than anything or anyone else. And this is, still remains true in marriage. My marriage to Amanda is secondary to my relationship with Jesus. And I hope hers is as well. And I, and I know that it is, but we need to be pursuing Jesus and life in him before anyone and before anything else. The Bible doesn't directly address dating, but it does give guidelines on sexual relationships, what it means to be a godly man or woman, and it provides teachings on marriage and friendship. And from the teachings on marriage and friendship, we can build a picture of what dating as a Christian should look like. Uh, in dating, you have this decision. I really like in the, in the video, one of the guys said, you can either kind of just go with it or date with your brain turned on. I really like that because in, in dating, you have a decision to make all the time to either give into temptations that you're faced with or engage the relationship being intentional in Jesus and asking, Emma, what I'm doing, is it honoring God? Is it honoring them? Is it honoring me? You have that decision to make. And you guys will find yourself in relationships. No one else can make that decision but you. And last, solid friendships and community are essential to the Jesus follower. It makes all the difference in the world. Just a few questions for you to take with you and then we will be done. Do you feel like you need to be dating to be accepted by culture or friends? I would say a lot of us probably feel that pressure. What parts or actions from past or current relationships do you need to confess to Jesus and seek redemption for? I don't like that question because it hits home. But what do I need to be giving over to Jesus? What are your intentions or motives for pursuing a romantic relationship? And what boundaries have you set or do you need to set in place? If you're dating and there are no boundaries, especially men, it is an act of a man of God to step in and say, hey, whatever is happening, we need to stop and we need to set boundaries in place. Ladies, if you are in a dating relationship and the man is not leading in that way, my first advice is to, to remove yourself from that relationship but you also have an opportunity to step in as a woman of God and say, this needs to, to be done and, and see what the response is in that type of relationship. But you need to have boundaries. And then as far as friendship, what, how do you just ide describe friendship? What does that look to you? And at the core of all this, where is Jesus in your relationships? Is he? And if not, how could you incorporate people that are following Jesus to do the same for you? That's a lot. I was nervous that combining friendships and dating would be too much, and surprise, it pretty much was. But thank you. Uh, I know, like a lot of the weeks, this is another one where there's so much more that we could talk about. I want to continue those conversations either in our small groups or we can tag on it, find a trusted peer or, or mentor to talk about um, relationships, to talk about dating. It's a big deal. It shouldn't just be dating in high school. It shouldn't just be 
thrown, thrown by the side. I will say I am an advocate for not dating in high school. Focus on Jesus, focus on friendships. You're not missing out on anything. It's really okay. I didn't date till the other side of college, and I think my life turned out all right. I'm pretty happy with, with my wife and my kid, and God is good through it all. Let's close in prayer. Jesus, I pray that for all of us, we remember to maintain our relationship with you more than anyone else, more than anything else, and that we, we seek you when it comes to those that we want to date or even just dating in general, Lord, and that we seek your will out first. May we remember to maintain honor and grace and humility in every area of our life, Lord. And as we've seen all throughout this series, may we remember to be rooted in your word, to pursue a relationship with you, and encourage others to do the same. In your son's name, amen.